Shilimehemen. My name is Darius, and today I'll be showing you how to make a modern rendition of a Bronze Age Mesopotamian dish, a vegetarian leek-based stew called pashrutum, also known as unwinding in its English translation. It's a very simple dish, but the original recipe is more like a list of ingredients than a step-by-step -step process, so I'll be recreating it for a modern kitchen. In any case, let's take a look at the world that was. To start with, the recipe calls for water to be prepared, and while this can be interpreted as it being just salted or seasoned, I'm going to be adding a stock or broth cube to some boiling water. This is just to round out some of the flavors of the finished dish. Here I'm going to be using about 500 milliliters or about 2 cups worth of chicken stock, but you could just as easily use vegetable stock for the base. It's entirely your call. Either way, make your stock of choice and put it somewhere warm while we go deal with the rest of our ingredients. Now, toss a good splash of olive oil, about a tablespoon worth, into a warm pot. The original recipe only calls for fat, but anything like this can work. I'm using olive oil because I think it would suit the palate a bit better than butter or sheep fat. Either way, whatever you use, leave that on medium-high heat while you deal with the leek. And remember to absentmindedly grab the wrong kind of knife for cutting it. Now grab the right knife and get to chopping. We want similarly sized pieces, so I'm going to be cutting this one into very narrow rings, about 2 millimeters in width so they all cook about the same rate. We don't want any raw or undercooked leeks in our finished stew. I find that one large leek like this is more than enough for three or four portions, so adjust your recipe based around that. You can save the leaves and the root of the leek if you're making your own stock, so you can keep those if you want. When the oil in your pan is shimmering, add the chopped leeks into the pot and cover them and let them sweat for about five minutes. While the leeks are sweating, let's prepare the other ingredients. The original recipe calls for a whole bunch of cilantro, but unfortunately, cilantro to me tastes like soap and I don't really like that taste. So I'll be using fresh parsley as a substitute. Cut about a handful that would fill maybe about a half cup of unpacked herbs. To make chopping them easier, I advise you to roll it into a ball and chop it. Mince it by chopping it again and then set it aside. The original recipe also calls for another vegetable, kurat, which I believe is an Egyptian leek. This is based on its botanical name, Allium kurat. So to substitute this, I'll simply be using a small shallot, finely minced. Next, take a fresh bulb of garlic and accidentally obliterate it as it was far more fragile than you were anticipating. So take two cloves from it and set it aside. Now while you've been preparing all the other ingredients, your leeks should be sweating away in the pot. If the bottom of the pot is brown like you can see here, don't worry, this is just the caramelized leek at the bottom of it, and will get scraped up as we continue on. Toss in the other chopped ingredients. Take a garlic mincer and press the two cloves in on top. Mix them all together so everything is combined. Then put them back onto the heat and let them sweat for another 5 minutes. After about 5 minutes, you can pour in the jug of stock that we made at the start, and then scrape up as much of that brown fond at the bottom of the pot as possible. At this point, if you want, you can add about 70 grams or a half cup of barley to the stew. Although the original recipe doesn't call for this, it would not be an unusual addition to the recipe. Far less alien than the shallot, I'd say. This would add a nice texture to the end product and will round out the flavor profile even more. Either way, if you add barley or not, put the pot back onto medium-high heat until it starts to boil. Once it hits a boil, turn the heat down to low and let it simmer away for about 20-30 minutes. Now, take some of your dry sourdough bread and pound it up into crumbs, or cut it up into crumbs even, about the size of your thumb. Since I didn't want to use the mortar, I simply cut it up into bite-sized pieces. This will then get added to the stew a few minutes before serving, so it'll soften up and melt a little bit, which would thicken the stew. In any case, add these in about 5 or 10 minutes before the stew is done, and mix them up to combine. When you think your soup is done, serve it up with a soup ladle in your nicest bowl, Garnish with a sprig of parsley or cilantro and dig in. This dish is simple, easy, and very filling. The longer you stew everything, the more mellow the flavors, the softer everything will be. This seems to be a precursor to the pottage dishes from medieval societies, so it definitely fits the name of unwinding. I've been Darius, and I hope you enjoyed this look at the world that was.